We've got something special going on here today. Yo, and welcome back to Danscapes. It's a wet new forest day today. When I was looking at the weather report, it didn't say there was too much rain, but we've just had a heavy downpour and soaked. So, but I'm on a different bike today. I'm riding the Trek Super Calibre. This is the Gen 1. I borrowed it from my friend Lance. Hang on, there's some llamas or alpacas over there. So I'm gonna quickly go through what components he's running and then we'll get back onto this ride. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick run through of the specs of this Trek Super Calibre. So we have the ISO strut, which is the frame in built suspension. It's got 60 mil of travel on this one. If you go for the second generation, so this being the first generation, it comes with 80 mil, so 20 more, and it's with a Rock Shocks now. This one it was running Fox. So as for the front forks, we've got the Rock Shocks Sid Ultimates top end cross country mountain bike fork with 120 mil of travel. When you buy these bikes, they come spec with 100 mil, but they have capabilities to run 120 mil and you can only buy the blue one separately. It doesn't come with any of the bikes. So that's a unique feature of this build. Up on the cockpit, we're running the Bontrager RSL one piece handlebar and stem made of full carbon. So very lightweight and very good and dampening. I can't remember what stem it is. I think it looks like a 90 mil and it's on a negative angle. So it puts you more in a forward position. We also have a remote lockout for the front and rear shock. That means that when you go into climbing mode, you can lock it out. And then when you're going down into descents, you can quickly unlock the suspension to allow for all that travel. Brake rise, this bike's running the Shimano SLX. It's got two pot calipers and up front, we've got a 180 mil rotor. And in the back, we've got a 160 mil rotor. So perfect for stopping in those steep descents. Grip wise, we're running lizard skin. They're very sticky, so your grip is always gonna be there. And we're also running a RockShox Reverb Hydraulic Dropper Post, which is perfect. So you can quickly remove the saddle out of the way when you're descending and then raise it when you're coming up to a climb. Perfect for mountain biking and also great for gravel riding, which a lot of people are now adding to their gravel bikes. Up front, the frame is built with knock block. So it means that it stops the bars from turning and ripping out your cables if you have a crash. And as for drivetrain, we're running the SRAM GX Eagle Access. So it's a completely wireless shifter. There's no cables here or there. Uh, the battery is built onto the derailleur as well. So unlike Shimano's where it, the battery is housed inside the frame, this one will be housed externally so you don't have to route any wires at all. Cassette, it's running a 10 to 50, perfect for those climbs. Up front, we got a 32 teeth chain ring and also it's running X01 cranks. Pedal wise, it's got the Shimano XT SPDs, standard perfect pedal, don't really need to upgrade from that unless you want to knock off a little bit of weight and go to the XTRs. So on the dropper post to go with it, the saddle it is running is the Physique Antares. And as for wheels, we're running the Hunt Mountain Bike 29 inch carbon wheels. The tires that we got with that are the Bontrager XR1 Team Issues. They got a small amount of tread, so it's great for gravel riding. Don't know how it's gonna perform well in the mud and the whole system is set up tubeless. And a good thing with having the shock built up here means that you got space for two water bottle holders, which is perfect for those long rides. Just to give you some background into our trip to the new forest, we decided it would be fun to do a one day gravel ride. Firstly, we were looking at getting the train as you can catch a direct one from London to Brockenhurst, but it was way too expensive at 50 pound each. Therefore, we opted for the two hour car journey with the bikes loaded in the back this later on worked in our favor due to the weather. I found a gravel loop on Commute, which took us around the New Forest, starting and ending at Brockenhurst train station. The loop took us through some amazing forestry scenes and was a much welcome escape from the busyness of London. As I only have one gravel bike, I let my partner Hannah borrow my Trek checkpoint and thought it would be a great opportunity to test out the Trek Supercaliber to see how it was to ride on the tame gravel paths. So I made a couple of changes before going on this ride. First thing was the saddle. I didn't get on too well with the physique one it came with. So I switched out for the one that was on my checkpoint, which is the Bontrager Aeolus Comp. Um, what's quite handy about it is it's got a mount on the back to hold a light, which is 
great for when you're riding on the roads. I just find it very comfortable for me. I also switched out for two side loader bottle cages from Bontrager as well. Um, that meant I can fit a 500 litre bottle in here and then also a 700 litre bottle up front, which is handy so I didn't have to carry water in like a bladder or anything with me. I switched out the mounts. So it originally came with a Garmin mount. I run Wahoo, so I've got a Wahoo mount holder up front and then also added my light holder so I can run a front light as well. Look at this, cycling through the new forest. So there was a heavy, heavy downpour. I don't know if you can hear me because the wind noise is so bad, but we're gonna go left. Just nice open gravel here. And the sun's out. Although, like I was saying earlier, it was a heavy, heavy downpour. And luckily we're inside the wood cyclery, which is in Lyndhurst. And the food there was amazing, especially for vegans. They had a lot of vegan options, especially on the sweets card, which I really enjoyed. We kind of waited till the rain subsided, had a look around the shop. Some really good bike packing stuff around there. But yeah, now just heading back to Brockenhurst. There's like so many different gravel paths you can take and loops. You can just keep looping them all up together. Long ones, short ones. So this is a nice little loop that we did from Brockenhurst. Stop off in Lindhurst, had some food there. And now heading back. I've got the sun behind me. Woo. And sometimes every now and again you're treated to a wild horse. Full on mud bog. <laughs> I just walked through it and my shoe covers have just come off. <laughs> oh. And apparently it gets worse later on. Who said that? Oh, full submersion. Just keep going. Clouds don't look great. Did we just come this way though? As for how this bike felt on the gravel paths, it felt like a dream. It was super comfortable, especially with those wide tires, giving extra comfort. And most of the time I was riding it with a locked out suspension. I did try it with the suspension unlocked and it was very squishy. And I can imagine, especially around our way, when you have to go out to the Surrey Hills and some of the descents there, it'd be quite handy to have that front suspension and especially the rear suspension as well. A few things I did notice, it did take a lot more effort and I think because of those wider tyres and the extra little bit of weight uh, that you do notice it when trying to get up to higher speeds. I felt I was putting a lot more effort in to get to those higher speeds that compared to when I'm riding either my road bike or my gravel bike. But, you know, as a one bike to do it all, these super calibers are perfect. You can do some long cross country mountain biking if you want to. This would be amazing at some of the rides I've been on in the Peak District where you've got a lot of rocky terrain and especially just opening up with the 120 mil suspension. And that's why I'd say maybe it's worth going up to the longer travel 80 mil in the rear on the Gen 2. That's because it will handle so well on those steep technical descents. Equally so, this bike is super capable, even with the 60 mil of travel and having that 120 up front, it makes so much sense. Uh, but yeah, I just really enjoyed it. One thing that I personally like is having the road bars or the gravel bars where it puts my plans in a straight, narrow line, 
Whereas having them out wide on these long handlebars, I did feel a bit uncomfortable on longer periods. And I noticed myself going into the middle, which wasn't quite handy when I needed to change gear or brake because I'd have to quickly switch my hands back to the grips. But that is something you can combat with. And if you're running something like the SRAM Axis system, you can run drop handlebars. I don't know how it work with the remote lockout and the hydraulic um, dropper post. You probably have to switch out to the reverb one. And especially with new technology now, they've got flight control added to these bikes if you go for the top end model, which means you have remote lockout and unlock with this suspension. But yeah, let me know in the comments below, what did you think of this Trek Super Caliber build? And also what would you run? Do you think this is a perfect bike for everything, whether it's gravel, cross country mountain bike, even road riding, you know? I have been overtaken by some, you know, athletic people on cross country mountain bikes and it is quite disheartening, especially when you're on a road bike. But yeah, that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel as it helps a lot and I appreciate it so, so much. Hope you're staying safe, staying positive, having fun. And I shall see you in the next one. Thumbs up. Guns up. They're raining over there. <laughs>